again, uh, again a, a week of, of three planned meetings of the Massachusetts Gaming Commission that um, we'll be hosting virtually uh, to establish our, uh, our quorum. I'll ask to a roll call, Commissioner Cameron. I am here, good morning. Good morning and thank you for your patience. Good morning, uh, Commissioner O'Brien. Good morning, I'm here. Excellent, Commissioner Zinnica. Here, good morning, everybody. Commissioner Stebbins. Here, good morning, everyone. Okay, great, and as you know, we have been able to conduct our meetings using uh, virtual technology during the course of this pandemic, given the relief that Governor Baker issued at the declaration of a state of emergency from certain provisions of the open meeting law. Um, we will continue to use our remote technology today. If there's any issue that uh, arises, please visit our website at massgaming.com. And I will call to order today's meeting. It is number 309 of the public meetings of the Massachusetts Gaming Commission. It is now 10.04, June 23rd, and we welcome everyone. <clears throat> we have a uh, special meeting today on, on one topic, and We'll get it started by asking Interim Executive Director uh, Karen Wells to set us up for today's discussion. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Good morning, Commissioners. Uh, as you are well aware, we had a quite a productive uh, meeting uh, last week, but there were some open questions and we wanted to uh, just get some more information to the Commissioners um, so that you could finalize the uh, guidelines for the opening of the casinos. Uh, staff has done uh, a lot of work as far as figuring out not only best practices, but uh, what's going on in other states and getting some additional public health guidance uh, just to help out with uh, those decisions that we can hopefully resolve today. There seem to be three open issues for your discussion today, and if we can resolve those, I think we can move forward with the guidelines today. Uh, the first one is uh, mask enforcement. Uh, particularly where the commission did agree to allow drinking in the casinos if someone's seated at a slot machine. Uh, and the second one was the height of the plexiglass. Uh, I can uh, ask the, the uh, casino representatives to give you a little more information. The uh, ability to obtain the, the plexiglass at the six foot height is quite difficult and I can let them explain that so uh, we can make some determinations on that requirement. And then the third issue, which we never really got into a fulsome discussion on, was the occupancy and what the occupancy level uh, should be at each casino uh, during this time of COVID. So uh, as to the first issue on the mask enforcement, I think uh, there's a, basically a, a choice for the commission whether to keep the language as is, which is a strict language that everyone, the, the uh, casinos just require that everyone wear, wear masks. Uh, one ask from the casinos was just to have some kind of reasonableness requirement baked into the guidelines uh, if they make reasonable efforts uh, to enforce that because uh, they understand that there may be someone sitting in a slot machine with a bottle of water and they may slide over two machines uh, and and uh, may have their mask down during that period of time. So what is what kind of efforts are, are required by the casino? Uh, in order to enforce that people are having their masks up and not carrying their drinks around. Uh, so I'll leave it to the chair to sort of jump start that conversation, see what you think. Uh, my recommendation is for each of these individually, we just, you know, if there's some disagreement, we could just take a vote on each of these issues and then collectively vote on the, the entire package at the end. That may be the most efficient, but I'll leave it to you commissioners to make that determination. <clears throat> So first, I, I want to thank, again, my fellow commissioners for all of your hard work. It's been a very demanding time since actually well before March 14th. And uh, while we can't ever really meet in person, whether virtual or not, you know, we work as a cohesive group through this public forum. And I can't tell you how much I appreciate that and how um, you know, much gratitude I have to be able to work with you. I also want to thank the entire team. Um, you know, I'm looking at the Brady Bunch pictures here, and I can see Bruce Bann and, and, and uh, Burke and Loretta Lilios, and I know how much work you've done to come up with a document that's so close um, to give 
excellent guidance for our um, our licensees. And then I want to turn to our licensees. I I can only see three faces. Um, Seth, you're a little bit shadowed, but I see you uh, clearly. Seth Stratton of MGM um, Springfield, um, Jackie from uh, uh, Encore Boston Harbor, and Lance George of Plain Ridge Park Casino. Uh, you have been working extensively with our executive staff. Uh, you have been participants in this very public forum, which is unlike all the other regulators that you must deal with across the country. That's our system in Massachusetts, and we can't be more thankful for your candid participation. So I just wanted to remark on that and thank you. With respect to our first item up, I think, uh, Karen, the only distinction I'd want to make, and of course I'm going to ask each of my fellow commissioners, is that I, I want to make sure that <clears throat> the, the, the ask is with respect to any, um, with, not with respect to requiring masks. Right, correct. It is simply a very narrow window when perhaps in because of excitement to be able to leap to a newly available uh, slot machine that a patron might have a lapse of memory and forget that they cannot walk around with a drink unless they are actively gaming. And for that, we want to apply some kind of a reasonable standard, as opposed to enforcing the wearing of masks generally. Is that right? Yes. Commissioners. Commissioner uh, Cameron. Uh, yep, thank you. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I actually don't see that big a distinction. I mean, we're requiring masks, but of course we expect um, the licensees to make their very best effort to to have their patrons comply. Um, so I, I don't know that it's it's requiring versus uh, uh, you know having reasonableness. I think we hope we're reasonable in everything we do when it comes to um, compliance. And Madam Chair, what might be helpful if if uh, Attorney Lilios has that language there. Um, she could give you the sort of the two options and see if, if you have any preference one way or the other, because you could do it either way. Uh, there's, as, as Commissioner Cameron indicated, uh, the expectation is that the uh, enforcement arm of the commission will be reasonable given the circumstances, but it's your choice whether or not you'd like the language as is or some modification. Sure, good morning. And as a, as a reminder, the language that is in the current document that you considered at the last meeting was it, that guests shall not be allowed to carry or drink beverages while moving about the gaming area. So again, this particular language is focused, as you uh, mentioned, Chair, on that narrow uh, part of the mask wearing involving uh, drinking beverages. There was some concern by the licensees that the language as it stands in the current document sets like a strict liability standard so that if a guest does uh, get up and move uh, to another machine or another table and, and forgets about uh, uh, leaving the drink behind, uh, that there is a de facto violation uh, on the part of the uh, licensee uh, regardless of any best efforts. Some alternative language for your consideration is licensees shall make reasonable efforts to ensure that guests do not carry or drink beverages while moving about the gaming area. Uh, so the reasonable efforts language is built right into that standard in the alternative language. Um, I actually don't feel comfortable altering the language we settled on at the last meeting. But I think to achieve the goal, to add that phraseology to say, and licensees shall make reasonable efforts to enforce, I think covers the request they're asking without in any way watering down the fact that guests are not supposed to be moving around. My concern is that there's some hint to guests that it becomes sort of reasonable on their part. I think if we have two sentences and keep it distinct, it addresses what they're asking for and doesn't water down um, 8C. Um, I've had conversations with Bruce and Burke about, you know, reasonableness is used in enforcement 
all the time, and I have confidence they'll be able to continue to do that in this year. So just to clarify, um, Loretta, could you read the two the two sentences that Commissioner O'Brien thinks says could be coupled? That would be helpful. Uh, so I believe, uh, Commissioner, that it would be guests shall not be allowed to carry or drink beverages while moving about the gaming area. Licensees shall make reasonable efforts to ensure that guests do not carry or drink beverages while moving about the gaming area. Or you could even say to ensure that guests do not violate this rule. Yep. Just shorter. And, we don't repeat yeah. it. And then it's clear that, you know, it's a reasonable standard in terms of enforcement, but that the rule on guests is do not move around. Remember, this is where our greatest risk is occurring, where the, ma the masks are likely to be lowered because they're drinking and moving around in the closest quarters where six feet is likely to not be achieved. So this is where it's, a, you know, for all of the licensees to really have a sustained reopening, a safe, sustained reopening. This is where you're going to want to employ your best efforts, but as you know, Commissioner Cameron made clear, we're fair and we're reasonable, and uh, you know the intent of a of a uh, of a patrons can be probably map, uh, mapped out given our ability to monitor. <clears throat> we will be reasonable, but that is probably where your greatest risk is. So you'll want to use every measure to enforce this really reasonable rule. Commissioner Zuniga, Commissioner, uh, 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 just one second. Um, Commissioner Zuniga, would you like to go before or after Mr. Stratton? No, I, was, um, I, I can chime in now and, and then react if, if necessary. Um, I think the combination language is, is reasonable. I'm, I'm, I'm in agreement with that. I think uh, something we talked about last time, and I think I made the point of, is that our, our leverage um, is, is really with the licensees and, 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 and they have their own leverage with, with patrons and they have to deal with very, very different um, people all the time. And in fact, they do. So, um, so long as we are applying our test as, as, as the reasonableness, I, I think it's fine. Um, and I think it, it should be communicated to patrons in, in the same way. Um, and so that, you know, if anybody gets reminded a few too many times, um, then they can point to, well, you're not supposed to, you're not allowed, and therefore now you have to either exit or modify in some way. And uh, before we turn to Mr. Stratton, Commissioner Stebbins, do you want to chime in now? Or? Yeah, I'd, I'd be happy to, and just picking up on a point Commissioner Zuniga raised, obviously any enforcement that any of our licensees do in their day-to-day -day operation is measured with a great degree of reasonableness. I, I like the combined language. But again, I want to go back to the fact that a strong communications plan and having patrons educated about this before they even step on the floor, I think will go a long way towards reducing these, these interactions or these uh, infractions by patrons. So if I know coming in, I can't walk around with my drink and I'm hoping the licensee will be, uh, will be thoughtful enough and, and courtesy enough uh, to uh, provide me with a new drink when I sit down at another gaming location. I think all that is part of a, a pre-opening communications plan will be extremely helpful. Mr. Stratton, Seth, good morning. Thank you and really appreciate the, the candor and the uh, of the conversation and we will of course make our best efforts to enforce um, any requirement. Um, one of the things, though, I do want to just clarify and consistent with our conversation with the staff, there are really two issues um, that we've been talking about here, one of which is, I think, more challenging for us than the other. The, we're talking about not walking around drinking drinks with masks down, which I fully understand and appreciate the concern um, from a public safety standpoint. Separately, walking around with a drink um, that's a bit more challenging for us and, and harder to understand the public health concern of someone with a mask on carrying their drink from one position to another without consuming that drink um, that's probably where our biggest challenge lies as folks want to responsibly move around and obviously there is um, significant time between when you can get served a drink and find a cocktail server to serve another 
uh, patrons view those not as free drinks, but something they've earned. And so we view w probably the most significant operational challenge to come from telling someone they can't bring the drink from one place to another, not from telling patrons that they can't walk around with a mask down and consume a drink while they're not seated. And if they're, I, I hear the direction the commission is going. Um, I guess my, I just want to highlight that issue and ask if there's any flexibility in terms of the latter scenario, which would be someone literally carrying a drink like any other um, good they have in their hands with a mask on as they move from one position to another in the casino, uh, which I think probably presents less risk and is more consistent with what we're seeing in our other operations in other jurisdictions. <clears throat> well, I'll be frank. <clears throat> Why are they walking around with their drinks? We, because they're heading to another spot to actively gain, or are they walking around to hold on to their drinks to just hang out? It's a, it's a fair question. I think we don't we don't see, and you know, and Jackie and Lance, if if you have a different experience, but we generally don't see a lot of people congregating walking around drinking, that the, the drinks are usually an amenity for folks who are engaged in gaming, um, but they do move around from position one position to another. And one of the biggest complaints we hear, understandably, from patrons is it takes too long to get a drink. Part of that is round times. You know, you have staff, they, they have certain round times, so they hit every, to limit consumption, we have 20-minute um, round times so that people aren't getting overserved. And so if someone gets a drink, it's going to be at least 20 minutes later that um, at least that someone comes around for another one. So that's the um, that's why a customer would be incentivized to hold on to a drink would be so that they so, can move. Don't have to wait. Okay, so, so before before I turn it over to my fellow commissioners, it sounds as though we're probably not saying a, a very different um, something very different because we know that we know that bars are not open right now in phase three. We know that you can't have a drink standing and not actively gaming because we decided that last week um, after a, a great deal of discussion based on all of, not only our review of every other jurisdiction and the public health implications from other jurisdictions, but also of course looking very carefully at what is permitted in this current state of affairs with respect to public health in Massachusetts. So I, th I thought that maybe we were just addressing that issue. If the individual is going to go walk around, um, but they're going straight to a seat, they're not supposed to, they're supposed to leave their drink there. You're saying now you want them to be able to walk around to an active, another active gaming spot, perhaps let's say five, let's say like how many yards away? you know, five rows away, and now they still have a drink. Commissioners, that's a distinction. Um, they want, he's suggesting, I'm assuming you're saying from active gaming spot to another active gaming spot, can they carry their drink? Correct. I think um, that runs the risk of mimicking a bar set up too much. And, and we went through this the last time, with all due respect to Seth, about the language in 8C covering the concerns that we had given the status of bars in Massachusetts right now. Um, I think the reasonableness standard addresses concerns there was going to be this overly strict liability enforcement. Um, and I think the scenario he's talked about is already baked into that amended language we talked about adding on to see. I, I'm not comfortable changing it and watering down the language we agreed on last time. Commissioner Zuniga? Well, I, I'm just trying to um, um, be reasonable um, in the sense that, um, you know, what we want is people to be wearing masks when they're walking around, uh, whether they're having a drink or bringing their keys with them or their pocketbooks, uh, you know. Uh, the idea is not to have people loitering, drinking, and, uh, you know, walking around. Uh, so the scenario of somebody is just going to take their drink and, you know, go somewhere else and sit down and enjoy it, you know, while gaming over there, to me is fine. Uh, and when it comes to enforcement, 
it would be, sir, put on your mask, not, sir, leave that drink, uh, because it's the mask that we are most uh, interested in. Commissioner Stebbins or Commissioner Cameron? Uh, the one thing I was thinking about is we don't want the unintended consequence of somebody guzzling the drink because they'd like to move and they know they can't walk with it. So I do not want that to be an unintended consequence of somebody guzzling um, a drink rather than drink it at a normal pace. So just a thought that I had listening um, to this conversation. Um, I, I, I see both sides, frankly. I, I don't want it to people to use this as a way to just uh, drink uh, because they can't do so in a bar. Um, so I, I, I hear, you know, is, is it, it would seem to me it'd be difficult to enforce. Well, I'm really just heading, as you say, chair five rows over from someone who um, uh, is, you know, is really just, okay, I got my drink and now I can walk around. So I, I, I do see it as a harder enforcement challenge if we say, yes, you can walk around as long as you're just going to another gaming. Uh, gaming. I, I guess the reasonableness has to be the answer here, meaning, okay, if you're just moving, you know you're not supposed to walk with the drink, um, I'm just going to slide down three chairs and, you know, I guess that's the reasonableness piece. I'm just, I'm just, it's not an easy answer, I guess is what I'm trying to say. Before we go on to Loretta, because I'm going to ask for some guidance from her, Commissioner Stebbins. Yeah, um, you know, I think Commissioner Camden, Cameron makes a good point. I don't think we want people chugging down their drink knowing that they have to do that before they can move. And Commissioner Zuniga's point of our, our real focus should be on we want people to wear the mask and keep it up as often as possible. Um, you know, you, you overlay this with people leaving a lot of drinks around. Now there's more responsibilities on behalf of security or cleaning staff or the wait staff to make sure that, um, you know, all of the discarded or left behind drinks are picked up. So um, not an easy decision, but I, I worry about the reasonable of this reasonableness of this overlaying it. And, um, you know, we're going to be focused on masks and we're also going to be focused on people not congregating. So, um, I, it, it doesn't rank up there with the other two in terms of importance for me, but I understand the criteria that we know will be set for bonus and that we don't have the, uh, the advantage of seeing what that language would look like at this time. Okay, if we could go to, I want to just chime in briefly and then go to um, uh, <clears throat> Loretta Lilios to just remind us of what the guidance is currently with respect to restaurants and, and eating and drinking and moving around. Um, I want to make a really important point here we're not in the same time when your guests expect you're to be able to finish a drink. We're not at the same time where guests should be expecting that they are going to guzzle it because in order to move um, to their next to their next slot. Every patron that comes in the door will understand because of the excellent communications plans that this is an exciting opportunity to re-engage but it's under very different conditions because we are in a pandemic. Things are going to be different. And 20 minute service that you normally do, you're gonna probably have reduced patrons based on these restrictions. Maybe that can be something you can revisit in order to really support the efforts we are trying to establish here, which is to ensure that when people get up, from a seated position, probably in closer quarters than we would like, they're not forgetting to put on their masks and they're not forgetting to continue to drink the drink that they were enjoying sitting down. We know that seated, facing forward, at a slot machine, sipping a drink with your mask down and not going up and down, if you are six feet away from another patron or person, or if short of that, you are protected by a non-porous barrier. We are going to achieve the best conditions to make sure you open up safely. So if there is a navigation issue, 
that you're trying to correct because now you want to serve the drinks, which are an essential part, we've all conceded that, of the business model, then maybe you need to think about how you can best accomplish that in the safest way in accordance with what we have right now here in Massachusetts as health standards. Loretta, am I misreading the guidance right now? Currently, the phase two restaurant guidance, uh, indoor and outdoor, uh, uh, contemplates uh, being seated uh, with uh, distancing uh, or uh, plexiglass barriers. And the bar scenario that you referenced earlier uh, is a phase four uh, um, rollout. So now with that said, I probably sounded very tough. It's not tough mean, it's, it's trying to be really smart so that this is a sustainable reopening and we don't have to reverse. What I'm hopeful for is that we start with the precautions that uh, Commissioner O'Brien outlined with a reasonable standard and, and hopefully our health metrics will shift so that we can incrementally be able to accommodate patrons so it starts to feel more like what they are used to. But it won't feel like what they're used to. So incremental change, and this is one where there is no runway um, investment so that we could maybe if some um, alleviate this, you know, in a, in a few weeks if, they, if we get further guidance. I'm open to all the comments from, from my fellow commissioners. I, I just I just want to make sure I understand your point. Um, are you suggesting that they revisit the amount of time it takes them to make rounds and serve drinks more frequently than every 20 minutes? No, I'm saying if they were saying that that guests they can't serve 20 minutes, I'm not. I do not want to encourage anyone to overdrink. Let's be clear, none of us. We monitor that carefully, and we will continue to monitor drinks. And so what changes were you so if there's, I don't know. If, I don't know the rule well enough, Commissioner Zuniga, if there's some relief that we can offer so they could freshen up their drink if they're staying seated or they can bring the drink over for them, we can think about something like that, or they can leave the drink, but rather than them just being able to get up and bring their drink because they want to safeguard that drink. I'm open to suggestions about, you know, but getting, giving them a new drink. I think somebody suggested that, one of my fellow commissioners, that uh, Commissioner O'Brien, if you could help me out here. Uh, uh, the I, no, I mean, I think there's two things I think that I wanna emphasize, one of which is what you and Loretta Lilios just talked about, which is we are looking at doing this in a manner consistent with the current guidelines. And the current guidelines do not allow a bar. They do allow alcohol and food service when seated. So the alcohol service that's happening here, as we've described it currently written in 8C, complies with those guidelines. I have a concern that allowing people to wander might run afoul of that as we know it right now. And I also think Commissioner Cameron's point about creating sort of this gray area for some client, some customer to say, well, I'm really just going across the floor to a seat of my choice. Oh, it's full. Well, I'm just gonna stand and wait till that seat's available. I mean, you know, the temptation to pull the mask down and drink is probably going to be reflexive even. People probably won't even yes. contemplate that they're doing it. So to me, the cleaner, safer way to do this, compliant with the rules and the realities on the floor, is as we wrote it in C, and then amending it with a reasonable and a standard to make sure we're saying this is not strict liability on the licensees part if they're using reasonable measures. Yeah, I, and, 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 and to your point, there is that, if you're carrying a drink, it's going to, and you're waiting for one second, it's gonna be hard to not, and then, not have a drink and then also the patrons who are not actively gaming won't be able to have a drink and i think we just start to really cloud our guidelines they're they're guidelines that are based on safety that that is right now in place and again if we could you know we will change our guidelines to reflect the rules the public health metrics in three you know, in, in a month, in three weeks, in, in whatever time it requires, because we want success for our licensees. But right now, that does sound like it gets where you're, you're walking around with a drink. And I think even if you have a mask on, it's not a key. It's not a pocketbook. Yeah, I, I agree with that. I, I really think it makes it um, 
very difficult and, and way too much gray area to, uh, to we want to be reasonable, but I think it, it, it helps, it's uh, difficult to be reasonable when you have so much, or you may have that much activity that is, it is within that gray area. So I, I do think it is cleaner to um, add that sentence and, and leave it alone. Right. And again, if I confused on the, the rule about refreshing drinks, Commissioner Zuniga, you know, please help me here. But it, I think I heard um, Mr. Stratton say that they have a 20 minute guideline. And you know, if it's, if, if chaos is gonna be created because the guest is gonna be upset that they have to leave their drink, then maybe they get seated and a new drink gets given to them. And if there's a 20 minute gap there, and it's because they hadn't even started their drink at the last place. I mean, I, I'm hoping that there can be customer service, reasonable customer service assessment there. And I know it's, a, it's hard to imagine that. Yeah, I mean, maybe people, uh, servers can be uh, trained and directed to say, um, here's your drink. If you wanna move around, you gotta let me do it for you, something to that effect. Maybe that's what you mean by your, um, I mean, you, you you alluded to that already, uh, by by sort of modifying some of the procedures. Um, I, I I just think uh, I, I think we're ultimately talking about the same thing. We need to be reasonable with the licensees, who in turn need to be communicating and as well ultimately um, persuading uh, customers to abide by what's the requirement. So as long I, I'm fine with the way the um, the sentence reads when it's combined. Okay, moving on then. I'm not unless I'm my unless the um, licensees have any comment. I see only Jackie visually, but I see everyone on mute, so we'll move forward. Um, um, uh, do we we could do it, if need be some kind of a straw vote on on these issues and then maybe vote uh, comprehensively? I think or that would be helpful in case there's there's some issues where a commissioner wants to. Uh, not go in one direction that's just on the record, but so that I think would be helpful, but it doesn't need to be completely formal. I think that's really important. Um, and, and then if it turns out that we, you know, we'll figure out what, what ultimately is decided at the end. So um, with the recommended language that Loretta um, read, that was um, inspired by Commissioner O'Brien, uh, do we have, uh, with a show of hands, um, those could, in favor? Could could Loretta? I'm sorry. Could Loretta just read that back to us so we we okay. have it? Yes. Sure. Guests shall not be allowed to carry or drink beverages while moving about the gaming area. Licensees shall make reasonable efforts to ensure that guests do not violate this rule. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Again, I'm, I'm fine the way it reads. Yeah, and, and Commissioner O'Brien, you're fine with that? Yep. Okay, so those who are fine with um, that proposal, raise their hands. I, okay, I see all five. All right, oh. thank you. We'll move, we'll move forward then. On uh, social distancing, um, the rule generally, uh, Loretta, if you wanna go through it for the commissioners again. Sure, so social distancing, and this would be for both slots and table games. Uh, Could we just stick to slots right now, please? Okay, so on Thanks. slots. Yes, please. Uh, we, we, your uh, existing version uh, talked about that licensees shall promote social distancing of slots play by either maintaining a minimum of six foot distance between operating slot positions or by installing plexiglass dividers not less than six feet high between operating slot positions. There shall be a minimum of four feet between slot machines separated by plexiglass dividers measured from the center of each chair and chairs shall be removed from disabled slot machines. Okay, and, and, oh, and so- I'm okay. sorry. Thank you, Loretta. So that's our rule and it's our, uh, Karen, I, I'll let you set it up, but I understand 
based on the conclusion of our last meeting that and in and, and conversation during that meeting that our licensees um, were um, concerned about the requirement of six foot plexiglass in the event they cannot achieve six feet distancing between the um, seats of the slot machines. Yes, so I'm thinking what would be helpful for the commissioners if, if each of the licensees could comment not only about what they're seeing as sort of industry standard for the plexiglass and what's going on in other jurisdictions uh, or in their other properties, and also challenges to obtaining that material that may be helpful for the commission. Okay, excellent. Um, who would like to start? I see Jackie, I don't see Seth or Lance. So Jackie, would you like to begin the conversation? Sure, thank you. Um, thank you. In terms of the procurement, we're looking at a, a two to three week um, a procurement period on the plexiglass. So the other issue is we've been able to source plexiglass in standard, um, sta the standard size of the plexiglass is five foot five inches. So that's been the biggest challenge because anything else would need to be custom built. So I, I, I think that's the, the biggest issues for us right now. Uh, Lance, or, um, hi, there you are Lance, good morning. And, and just to be clear, that's only on the slots. Yes, yeah, so we're just right now addressing slots, thank you. Yeah, after the uh, the conversation we had last time regarding this uh, this issue five 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 six, uh, we did go back to the vendor that we had um, had an agreement with and ask if they could re-engineer it. They are in that process of of re-engineering to achieve that six foot. Uh, I, I think we'll get there. Uh, the challenge is the same as Jackie and Encore are having. It becomes a question of uh, of timing and. Um, at this point, I think we're optimistic that we'll have it on property and installed. Mm -hmm. Prior to you, potentially, long and short, probably two weeks for it to arrive and to be installed on property at six feet. And to achieve the six feet, you have a. Are you having to accomplish a fix? Um, but the because I just want you were a little bit hard to hear at first, Lance. So was it five six or? Um, no, we went back to the vendor who is building, and they will be handling the re-engineering for us to achieve six feet. There will be nothing that will be done on property to achieve six feet. All of it will be handled by the company. Okay. And Seth? So we're probably, I would say, based on what um, Lance and Jackie stated, the, the furthest behind in terms of um, procurement for Plexi, um, our company's experience has been that um, this, we generally have not been, as I mentioned last meeting, using Plexi between machines and our experience has been in all of our other jurisdictions that it's generally um, every other machine with masks on. Um, so it, that's likely how we would um, open. Um, Without, Seth, can, I, can yeah. I just interrupt for one distinction? You just said every other jurisdiction has masks on and every other seat. Do you allow drinking? Yes. Uh, I, I, can't, I, I can't certify that. I don't have knowledge of each and every jurisdiction, so there might be an outlier. But yes, um, generally, drinking is allowed. Um, well, there's I don't want to misrepresent that there may be, you know, one out there that I'm not aware of that has additional restrictions, but okay. um, so so because of that, and and there are you know there are some challenges when um, when you treat one jurisdiction and one proper property um, different than than others, and our company is striving for as much universal um, programming of our safety plan throughout um, the company. So I think um, we'll certainly we've started exploring and we'll explore procurement a plexi and see if the business case can can be made to expand but I think based on um, if that's the requirement we would probably be forced to open with um, or I don't want forced we, we would need to open um, with simply the six foot distance which is a significantly reduced number of machines which correlates to reduced revenue and reduced positions so I think that's um, practically where we would end up uh, opening, we would have to explore whether 
um, we can selectively um, roll out Plexi if, if it makes sense from a um, business standpoint um, to do so to expand the offerings. But um, I, I don't think we're presently prepared to be um, opening in early July with, with Plexi on, on slot machines. Um, so we'd, we'd have a significant reduction in our, our offerings. Okay, can we show Zuniga? You know, I, I have a question, um, and only because I've been venturing out a little bit myself uh, more and uh, seeing uh, other businesses. Um, we sort of arrive into this notion of the plexiglass, but there are other instances where they simply put in a, what you need is a clear solid surface, uh, including, you know, some uh, plastic. Um, have you, have any of the licensees looked at uh, things like that or, or know of other uh, solutions like that? I mean, I know that the plexiglass is, uh, is, is solid and very durable and whatnot, but are there other uh, materials that might actually? Yeah, I think the the language is non non porous, non porous. Yeah, yeah. non porous, non porous and clear because we want to see through in camera coverage and all that stuff. Yeah. Um, I mean, uh, are there other uh, solutions? Have anybody contemplated other things besides this? Y Yes, in answer to your question, we actually what we're looking at is not technically plexi, but it is that non porous. Um, I forget the exact ingredients, but uh, it, it, it looks like Plexi, but it's not actually Plexi. Seth, if, um, if there was any relief on the height, would that alleviate any of your business considerations? Um, that's hard to say at this point, because again, I, we're prob we're, because we were kind of the furthest behind on looking at Plexi, it sounds like um, the other two licensees are finding solutions on the height piece. I, I think that's um, if we pursue Plexi to expand the number of games, I'm guessing that we'll be able to, to find um, the six foot height. Um, it, if it's more costly, then that certainly, you know, is, is part of that economic analysis of, um, you know, whether, whether it's feasible to do that. So, um, Sitting here today, I think we're less concerned about the height than the than the overall requirement. Jackie, would any relief um, on the height requirement um, be helpful? It would be very helpful to us. Uh, we would be able to get it installed. As I said, it, that's the um, that's the standard size that it comes in, and uh, we'd be able to get that installed faster uh, because we wouldn't need to have it custom made. I'm sorry, what's the lead time if you don't have a custom and you do the six feet? Uh, we haven't even got there yet with the manufacturers. So one of the things I wanted to add is that we've considered, of course, the measures uh, that other jurisdictions are taking to combat the virus, and we've actually had the benefit of being late in the game. Um, the sad news is that we were late because we experienced um, a health crisis that was different from other states and other jurisdictions, but we've learned from our fellow, jurisdic uh, fellow regulators and other jurisdictions and the measures that are imposed you know, by both the federal and state authorities. I think that I'm, you know, I'm hearing um, MGM Springfield is, has had not been considering adding a non-porous barriers in order to um, achieve a protection when social distancing of six feet can't be accomplished. I think we have established that right now that that the choices we're giving the licensees makes best sense. I don't want to be unreasonable and I want to hear from my fellow commissioners, but if there were industry challenges um, in achieving a proper non-porous barrier, one suggestion I could make for our guidelines is to suggest that there be um, a, a range of five feet to six feet. Uh, five feet five to six feet to be achieved um, in the in the um, height of the plexiglass. You know, I, I want to make clear that I like the idea of our licensees working to achieve the the 
the safest measure and the only thing we can turn to right now is the guidance of, that we're receiving from the restaurant uh, guidance and that makes sense but <clears throat> while seated at a slot machine sipping a drink a patron is a lot like a restaurant diner but there are also distinctions you know the slot player is focused facing the machine in fact if i'm a successful slot machine player i probably don't turn my head much i really focus straight forward at the machine i'm not engaging in conversation across tables with my fellow patrons at the restaurant you know up to the six uh six member group that is allowed right now <clears throat> And so that, that distinction that I'm attempting to make is, in fact, could reduce the risk of spreading the virus if six feet isn't achieved, but I have a porous, non-porous barrier between me that extends up above me. And I'm thinking, given that we don't really have the you know, capacity as experts to make that distinction, it seems reasonable to me, and, and I look to my fellow um, commissioners, to say, that we would ask you to make your very best efforts to create the safest barrier. Um, you know, this would just be a suggestion that we have in the guideline a range that it be no less than perhaps by five. I'm 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 fine with that. I'm fine with that suggestion. I've always thought of it um, as sitting down, that really, uh, but as you point out, minimize um, facing forward that really minimizes the exposure. Um, so long as there's uh, a barrier, a non-porous barrier um, on either side of my face with some height above uh, my face and a little bit below, it would be, uh, you know, appropriate. So um, if, if, it's, if it's something that doesn't require, end up in not requiring uh, a lot of customization, uh, I think it's, uh, it's very reasonable. Um, Commissioner O'Brien. Government level, I, I'm surmising, although I'm not an expert, that part of the reason the six feet is chosen is you're looking at the average height of individuals that are going to be there. And I think that restaurants, I think the scenario we talked about before was back to back booths still have six feet separating people. You're facing opposite ways, et cetera. That's still the restaurant height. Um, I do think you have a greater risk of because you're having parties of up to six congregating, you may have people standing closer than that that you don't have in a restaurant. The five ten and a half five eleven variance was not uh, particularly concerning to me. Five five to me um, is concerning to me. I think it's too low. So I would key it to the governor's advisory board. Certainly, they come in and say that's acceptable. But given the fact that six feet is mandated in restaurants, to me, five ten five eleven seems like a de minimis variance to go lower than that. To me, I think you're getting people whose faces are now going to be above it. Um, sitting and that sort of thing. So my comfort level doesn't go down that low in the range. Commissioner Cameron? I, I, um, are we expecting any other guidance or we think we have all the guidance we're going to get at this point? I mean, there's, um, has anyone- I'm providing, uh, a, I'm providing a range of, of well, the, the guidance that we're giving them is based on our exact conversation today that there's some industry challenges around the plexiglass. Sure. So our guidelines, if we have a five, if we have, we have a range and, you know, as Commissioner O'Brien points out that that range needs to be the higher level, then there'll be a, a fix, but we would be, you know, they would have our guidance from us to be able to work from. Uh, in, in other words, our guidance is always going to be subject to federal, state, and local um, oversight. And you know, as we know, the advisory board has been issuing industry standards. And, and if we made a decision today that said, okay, you know, five, five to six feet, we think is, is reasonable, does that then have to go back um, uh, to the working group and the governor's office to take a look at and see what they think. I'm just trying to understand. I think all of our guidance, no, I think all of our guidance will be subject to re review. And I'm hoping that we don't have to go back to the working group because we aren't, they're not giving, you know, we are giving guidance to that is based on our role as regulator. And we're just part 
of the layering because ultimately it comes from the governor's office and the and the governor's uh, the opening advisory board. We've always said that everything that we do right now is subject to the federal, state, and local authorities. So I'm still so they would we would give this guidance and then there may be there may or may not be additional guidance. Sure. For instance, let's just say on this particular piece, if they said, you know what, now that we've heard, you know, that how slot, how people work at a slot machine, you know, that they really may be different from a restaurant, they may say there is a distinction from the six foot requirement, or they may say there's not a distinction. But, you know, I think, um, you know, I, I don't think that any industry well, I just know that we have to we have to do our our work as a regulator, and their take our guidelines will be guidance for them, and they will then you know under this declaration of emergency, the the governor's advisory board and the Baker Polito administration can impose further restrictions and guidelines and guidance. So if we if we had a consensus that we could that that said okay um you know anywhere between five five and six feet unless further guidance comes out is that the the, the caveat that goes into this guidance that we're giving now i'm just struggling with who goes well, i think first. that that's our overlying that is our overlying that always everything i think we've started every meeting with that uh, understanding that we are just giving one set of guidance that could always be over, over written. But it does seem, I but, mean, PPP did manage to get six feet in, in the queue mm -hmm. in less than a week. That's so right. So to me, I, we, I'm wondering why we're spinning wheels. On no, something. this is just a suggestion from on my part to, to give some, um, you know, I, I have been able to personally think about it. I've actually positioned myself and my husband and, you know, we've actually thought about where your face would be turning in the in the course of sitting while actively gaming and how it might be distinguishable from the restaurant um, patron. Right now we only have that six foot standard for height for plexiglass based on the restaurant standard. And so um, I'm suggesting as a recognition of what we understand as an industry challenge right now to give a little bit of of a range of options from five 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 to six feet with my position would be i would like to see best efforts to achieve six feet but it would be you know a range of five six uh five five to six feet yeah and I'm, I'm fine with that and i suppose you're also suggesting that they effectively uh take a risk anything under six feet if, uh, if someone else later comes in and says that's inappropriate or that's um you know, it's unacceptable isn't that the case i couldn't quite hear the end commissioner soon ago so i guess you're suggesting that someone else the state you know the, the whomever uh besides this commission can come in and say at a later time um that Five five was inadequate, and then make them go to something different. I think our licensees, our licensees know that they that they are subject to the um, reopening advisory board's guidance. Uh, am I right, but, licensees? That's, that's licensees? Precisely, yes, yeah. Lance is giving the thumbs up. They all understand that they are subject to the those the casino is in phase three. Right. They will be looking for guidance from that. Right. So in other words, if that group. You know, the advisory comes in and says, turns out that 5-5 five, five is inadequate, then that'll be the end of that story. And they either have to, re, you know, reformulate or re rebuild or disable uh, machines so that they achieve the six feet distance in some other way. In other words, uh, by us giving the, the, the range, which I agree with you, we should, then the addition now uh, uh, the, the, they take on the risk if they decide to put in something that is five five they take on the risk of this advisory group at a later time coming in and saying that's inadequate that's exactly right 
Yeah. That's why, you know, so and then I they can like, then they can decide, you know, whether they go for six or whether they go for five five. Or they wait for the advisory board's guidance, which, you know, I, we have been trying to be as consistent as we can from everything we know in Massachusetts. Loretta's done such a great job advising us on that. And we've also been looking at all other jurisdictions. <clears throat> we um you know the this is a an ask the six feet would be preferable. It would have been preferable last week. We have been told and informed that there is a challenge. I hear PPC saying they can make a fix. You know, and and I'm not sure if you've already gone ahead, Lance, and done the ordering. Again, I, you know, I would encourage the higher you can go, the more of a barrier you're creating for the safety of everyone. I just am not convinced that it's unreasonable to say that five five might be might be uh, not sufficient. And so, by giving a range, we're giving the opportunity to our public health experts to to indicate otherwise, if need be. But um, we, I think our licensees have all affirmatively. They all affirmatively understand that they will have to be in you know, conform with the guidelines that come out of the governor's office. Uh, Madam Chair, if I can just have some clarity because we've talked about it and made this kind of hand gesture, we're not talking about plexiglass on both sides of an operating machine. No, that's that's the that was me being a, a player that I'm focused okay. forward. Okay. Focus forward. Okay. As opposed to, uh, you know, having a meal with someone where there's more speaking and more activity. If you can't achieve six feet social distancing between the tables, they must achieve a six foot high plexiglass in a restaurant. Right. But just, just to make clear, we're not asking for plexiglass on both sides of an active machine because the next machine down will have a plexiglass barrier on its side. So you obtain that six foot distance. And I see Commissioner O'Brien saying yes, so I think I'm saying it correctly. To be clear, the plexiglass would allow you to have less than six. I think we settled on four and a half feet or greater, um, which allows some places like Wynn has the ones that they could then do every other if they insert the plexi between those. And then otherwise you could have six feet with no plexi dividing. Okay. Just to clarify, Loretta, is it four and a half feet or four feet? I'm sorry. Uh, I'm, current, uh, there's a minimum of four feet measured center of the seat to center of the seat. Yeah, that was my recollection too. Thank you. Yeah. Is is there anything that can be? I I understand. You know the 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 standard size plexiglass available at obviously varying heights. Um, I think Commissioner Zuniga talked about this. The last point, trying to find a way to raise it. Um, by putting in some type of platform or frame on the bottom to raise it to six feet. Just talked about restaurants between booths, which is coming up to six feet, but obviously a good part of that distance is the actual back of the booth. Um, is there anything that our licensees have contemplated about putting something on the bottom to, to hold the plexiglass? It could raise it to the, the six feet, even though you're still buying the standard Kind of off the off off the shelf piece of plexiglass or other impervious service material. We have been looking at um, a number of, of options. As I said, we can achieve the six foot. It's just a custom order, and we're, they're not clear on the lead time at the moment. So there there's certainly options uh, in terms of in terms of achieving that six foot height that, that we're still investigating. I don't know if our other licensees want to weigh in on that question or not. We certainly discussed what uh, what or how we could re-engineer what was being proposed to us at the time, which to Jackie's point was 5.5, five, which does seem to be a bit of a standard. Um, where we ultimately arrived was put it back into the lap of the manufacturer. And so they were the ones who took on the responsibility of re-engineering and adding additional height. Executive Director Wells, well, what have you learned or what have you? Um, um, I think the, um, 
You know, I mean, obviously it, it, it's challenging because everyone wants to do the right thing here. Uh, I think it's a, it's, ultimately it's a, it's a public health issue. Uh, I, and I understand that, but there's also considerations on, on the business. So um, as Enrique pointed out, the, uh, it, it's the assumption of the risk. If the commission gave this minimum, minimum five, five, um, then there's an assumption of the risk for the licensees uh, if they want to uh, get any further guidance from the governor's office. What I'd be interested to know is there, what I'm hearing is that this 5.5 is, is sort of that industry standard. So if the licensees could let us know, is that what's going on in between slot machines in other jurisdictions? And then would Massachusetts be an outlier requiring the six feet? I'm kind of curious if other jurisdictions are just having the five foot five, because as the chair pointed out, people are seated, people are facing forward, and in Massachusetts, we're requiring the masks. Does that combination of things compensate for the, this, the potential seven inch difference? So I'm curious what the licensees could tell us about what's going on in other jurisdictions. We, we, have, we have no other jurisdictions that are requiring flexi between slots. So again, we don't, um, we're looking at it kind of as an issue of first impression here in Massachusetts um, from our standpoint. Bruce Bain, can you remind me on the um, where plexiglass is being required? Or where it's being used, Bruce Band? Can he, can, maybe Bruce can't hear me. Bruce, right, do, where it's being used if not required? Oh. I'm curious, Seth, is, is the Borgata using Plexi in New Jersey? I, I, I don't believe it on all their tables, not on their. Okay. And in, in, in terms of, um, is, uh, are any of the other jurisdictions using Plexiglass? Uh, I, I know that they're, they're using it in uh, California at some of the reservations. Uh, I'm not sure of all the Mississippi uh, uh, casinos. Uh, I would have to check at the individual ones. Uh, of course, MGM has some casinos there, but I would have to check at the non-MGM casinos. Right. So we could find out the height, but I kind of feel like that was work that you know we really wanted to have done for today. I am making a recommendation that we give a range. The range, if 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 our if my fellow commissioners are concerned that we are going to look less than stringent, I can assure you that we are really taking into consideration every public health consideration that we have in our current state of Massachusetts. The only difference here is that if we pass the guidelines with and say six feet like we're going to do and then there was some leeway just because we can't have current you know a current um, today yes that's going to be fine if we can you know because let's face it the the administration is working with a lot of industries right now in phase two, never mind phase three and, and future phase four. <clears throat> they are aware from the industry, I know, that um, there's a, there is a runway issue. We're, we're informed by the industry that there's a runway issue. So today, to sort of address their runway issue, I'd like to be able to give firm guidance on our part and not have a piece hanging out there so that when the public health experts take a look at our guidelines in conjunction with the guidelines from the industries, they can make some reasonable, um, uh, they can, they can uh, insert their expertise and also ask questions. And perhaps it might be, why is this a range of five, five to six feet? And it can be an explanation, and then the public health experts could give a, um, either a blessing or not, and say, no, it's got to be six feet. Now, whether what whether or not that can happen at the time frame that the, my licensees, you know, our licensees want, well, I, you know, I I can't address that. We can only hope that you know we are we are we will be working in support of our licensees to um, advance the guidelines and explain the timeline. This is a complex industry. I think everyone in Massachusetts understands that. 
we're trying to give guidance that will allow them to move forward subject to the state's final final review so if we're I, if i want to i understand that it's it may feel like if you say if you say a range that you're giving on you know a concern about safety i don't want you to think i'm doing that i'm saying could we give a range so that the public health experts could look at that and we wouldn't have to revisit this if we say six feet and there is a range unless we just want to impose six feet six feet six feet um, and 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 make that the decision today and 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 pass it forward but i just wanted to be cognizant of the industry challenge we could also say six feet or the governor advisory board's recommendations whichever is shorter yeah i i think i'm just concerned that we're i i wouldn't want them to go ahead and order and think okay this is great five well, six five five i can do it and then they're told after the fact that's not acceptable i don't know how that's helpful on our part I, i'm not i'm not suggesting they go ahead and order and i don't know what our, our licensees are uh, if they've gone ahead that is their risk they know they are subject to the governor's advisory board's decision they know that we are not the last stop in this in with respect to this pandemic under this declaration of emergency issued by the governor of the commonwealth we are not the last stop i just um you know if i'm not sure why it's not a re why reasonable why it's not reasonable to give unless we just want it if if there's a if we do a straw vote that we just want to require six feet i you know and that's our recommendation uh, through our guidelines we can do that straw vote i just want to make sure we are hearing our our licensees this was the stumbling point last week i know plexiglass alone is a stumbling point uh, for MGM Springfield, I see it as an outlier for them. I think, Seth, I'm hearing you say that you're going to take measures to reopen that um, um, in the way that you may not introduce plexiglass. We gave the choice, and it's, a, it's based on sound reasoning because it all came from an analysis of the current state of Massachusetts health um, issues and, and metrics and data. and informed by other jurisdictions it's not lost on us that other jurisdictions may have had less stringent or less restrictions less uh, stringent um, regulations and less restrictions and some of them have to revisit it is my hope and i don't want to speak for my fellow commissioners that we don't that we advance the casinos business businesses and not have to take steps backwards So the idea that, you know, plexiglass, if you want to have every other, that seems to be, we have a reasonable standard. And I know that that's not what MGM wants. They want every other seat, which is four feet distancing between people with masks that can be lowered the entire time someone has a drink in front of them. It is my understanding that drinking is an absolute essential component of the business model, whether it's alcohol, water, tea, coffee, that that is a piece that, that our licensees need. We understand that. That's part of the, the considerations. So it's either six feet. Can you, can you hear me? Oh yeah, yes. um, you know what, Enrique, yes we can, thank you. Sorry, I, I, um, I had to move to a phone line. Uh, I, I'm not sure if I interrupted, but I'm okay with essentially what you are suggesting, uh, Kathy, that we we provide some flexi flexibility in the range and and then, you know, because uh, we, we need to move forward. Right, so I'm, um, and just so you know, Enrique, um, we have you at the last two digits are 93 and 
we can see your yellow box lighting up, so chime in anytime you want. Um, and I know Enrique has a, a firm stop at noon. So um, why don't I do a, a, a straw vote? Commissioner Stebbins, you haven't weighed in so much as of late. I don't, so there you are. Yeah. Sorry, Madam Chair. Yeah, you know, I listen, I, I think our licensees understand the inherent risk. I know we're stuck between guidelines for phase, phase two and what might come out in phase four. Um, I really would like to see our, our licensees try to achieve six feet, make all reasonable efforts. And if that includes taking a piece that's five five and putting some type of bracket on the bottom to raise it to six feet, um, I, I would hope they'd be able to consider that. Maybe we could make that part of a proviso that all efforts, best efforts, feasible efforts be made, um, that that's really the direction we want. The more height, the better. Um, I, 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 that's my, my feeling. I just, because I don't have that public health expertise, I would hate to be instituting a requirement that turns out not to be necessarily required from a public health perspective. That's the only reason why I'm suggesting a range. Um, otherwise, I'd be staying right, right with you, Commissioner O'Brien. Six feet makes me feel you know, really good, um, but there would be uh, that range in the event that there is public health to, you know, support for a lesser standard based on the activity at hand, which is, is, can be considered different from eating at a, a restaurant. Commissioner O'Brien, I mean, Commissioner O'Brien, Commissioner Cameron, what could help you get more comfortable? Well, I, I don't feel comfortable making the decision that five, five is okay, because I don't have that expertise to say that. Um, so I think I'm, I'm really leaning toward uh, what Commissioner O'Brien said, which was, uh, you know, right now the standard is six feet, unless there's uh, relief given by the public health officials here in the Commonwealth. If they take a look, if the case is made that 5-5 five five is really something, um, you know, uh, that they, they want to, they want public health to consider and they consider it, they have the ex expertise and say, we're comfortable with that, then that's fine. <clears throat> but I guess I'm just not comfortable saying and that I'm, you know, 5-5 five five is okay because that's the industry standard. I just yeah, I don't think anyone is saying that, Commissioner Cameron. I don't think anyone's saying that that's 5-5 five, five is fine. Well, I think we all are admitting we don't have the public health expertise, but we're giving a range so that when the public health experts do see our guidelines, they would know that, you know, what the first question they might say is why is the range? And, you know, we can indicate that in the industry may already be indicating that 5-5 five, five is the challenge. I would love for them to be working to get the most height possible. So I don't know if necessarily that the, the language is different. The five five, it is different because the five five in what you're at, what you're suggesting is really a manufacturing driven number. It's not a public health driven number. And so we're really talking about when PPC is exceeding six. MGM is not going there right now. They're going to do a cost assessment. So I'm not sure this provides any relief to them. And so we're really talking about one of the licensees who is going with a default height at this point while also exploring other options. And so I'm comfortable saying six or if a lesser height by the governor's advisory board, but my concern is also that five five is not health driven. And so I don't want in any way to signal back to the advisory board looking to us as experts that somehow fair. we have some more knowledge about this. That's an acceptable height. Fair. That's very fair. Can I can I also mention that um, you know each one of them each one of these metrics is supposed to be a standalone and we're overlaying a number of them which in my mind work positively which is why I think this range is appropriate. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Commissioner Sunika. Uh, that's a really good point. Loretta, can you um, maybe suggest some language for us, please? I don't see her. There she is. No, no, she's not gone. It's um, the board shifts, so. 
and I don't want to put you on the spot, Commissioner um, Wells, Commissioner, I mean, Commissioner O'Brien, uh, Interim Executive Director Wells. You, you, uh, you could use language uh, as a, a point for your discussion on um, uh, you know, maintaining either a minimum of six foot distance between operating slot positions or by installing plexiglass dividers not less than five feet five inches unless the Baker Polito administration specifically requires otherwise, or you could say uh, um, installing plexiglass not less than six feet unless the Baker Polito administration authorize the, authorizes the use of plexiglass dividers in height less than six feet. I really don't love ins inserting that language in here because every single provision here this document is how many pages long they're all subject we have said this repeatedly they're all subject every provision is subject to the um oversight of the uh governor's office the governor himself in in the in the baker Polito administration every single provision could be we could have made you know, we may be spending a lot of time on this one, but there may be other ones where we, you know, haven't you know, made the proper suggestion about something. So to insert it there, I think um, it, I, I'm uncomfortable with inserting that language into a particular provision. We're giving a range. I would like to give a range um, that's, that it assists, I'll call it be, you know, I'm really hoping that if we gave a range that perhaps our colleagues, our licensees at MGM Springfield might think about using plexiglass because I think it might actually create additional safety because every time we're putting up something that will act as a barrier might be helpful. I'm not sure that that will prompt a different than that's their prerogative. Our rule is six feet that has to be achieved for plexiglass. And it seems to be plexiglass is a problem for one of our licensees in general. The height should be an additional, an additional challenge. Alternative language could be um, installing uh, that licensees shall use best efforts to install plexiglass in a height of not less than six feet between operating slot machines, but in no event uh, less than five feet five inches. I'm As okay an alternative to the six feet requirement. I hear Commissioner Zuniga say he's okay with that. Um, Commissioner Stebbins. Up. Commissioner Stebbins. Yeah, you know, I'd like to I'd like to keep to the reasonable effort to reach six feet. I think we're erasing some uncertainty for our licensees if we go with what the current recommendations are of the of the governor's reopening committee. I I, I hear you, Madam Chair, in terms of you know their review of this overall document, but sticking to a number. However, they reach six feet high um, with the piece of plexiglass, uh, I think would just be um, give them a little more confidence or uh, is, is a more credible direction for us to give them at this time. Yeah. So do I you agree. agree with the language that Loretta just said? Or? No, the, no, Commissioner Stebbins is suggesting that we need to insert in that particular provision something about the um, the, the governor's advisory board. I, I really am uncomfortable with that because I don't want to suggest yep. that this provision, uh, you know, we're going to be, the, the whole, all the guidelines are going up and they're going to review every provision carefully and they're going to have their own guidelines that they always have. Yeah, Madam Chair, I'm not suggesting we include that language whatsoever. I'm saying we should almost leave it the way it is. We're trying, try to get to six feet. And if that's a, 
five five piece of plexiglass with some type of base on the bottom as long as they're reaching that six feet height um, I would feel more comfortable with and I'm sure they would before they go out and spend a lot of money on a piece that's five feet five inches but what we're not doing is flagging the issue that the industry is having for this the height that's my point if we give a range um, it, it would flag the issue can the licensees, I, um, maybe you have suggestions on what you, how we can be helpful. Um, if five feet five is not uh, a big issue for you, help me out because we'll just go with straight six feet here. If that's if you're not going to be putting in plexiglass, we obviously would love to have the highest um, protection. You raised a business consideration. I'm working um, right now to uh, uh, be able to assist you in a reasonable fashion. <clears throat> um, I've got at least three commissioners who are uncomfortable with that. I've got one commissioner who's comfortable with the idea of a range. Any, any help on, on how, if this is not a, if this is, this is uh, an attempt to address what I understand is a true industry challenge. So, uh, Madam not. Chair, if I, if I may, um, I think, you know, obviously our preference is the 5.5 because that allows us to order it and get it installed um, as soon as possible. However, if there's a best effort requirement to reach the six feet, as a practical matter, we know that we can custom order it and we can reach the six feet. So I'm not sure it, it really uh, solves well, that problem. Let's be clear. If you want to start ordering it today, um, based, if you want to start ordering it today, I'm not sure when the advisory board would be able to give you this guidance. So, and that is, that's why we're here today to give you the guidance. So if you can achieve the six feet today, and it's not truly an industry challenge, then, and you want to move ahead, otherwise you would need to wait for any further guidance. So if six feet can be achieved, and that's, and you want to move ahead, that that's more in your interest then you, because I would say otherwise you would have to wait for, for further guidance from the public health experts. Six feet. Right. Um, okay, uh, uh, Seth, I don't see. Oh, now yeah. I see. Thank you. The six feet in height is, is, is not an area of concern for us. Um, as I've mentioned, it's the overall requirement. So if we do, if we do move forward with that, um, I presume we'll be able to uh, okay. Material and, satisfied. And, okay, and um, Mr. George. Yeah, I think you know where where Penn is and where Plain Ridge is. Uh, certainly comfortable moving forward at, at six feet. Okay, let's keep it at six. We'll keep it at six feet to um, make best efforts for six feet. If you need to revisit, revisit it. Let's go forward. I think Enrique, you you're comfortable with that. Yes. Thanks. Let's go forward then on, on table games. Um, <clears throat> right now, the, the uh, requirement would extend to all table games um, for blackjack style, in that we would not have craps, roulette, and um, poker at this time. That doesn't mean if the public health metrics don't shift that you wouldn't be able to introduce those games, but at this time, that's the recommendation. I think we can we can um, move forward then on the issue that's open if at all, I think was the, the use of the plexiglass on all blackjack and there might be a little bit of a deviation as to the six feet. And that's right. what, five, 10 and a half inches or five, 10 at the height of the plexiglass for the table game. I'll defer to the licensees. I think it was 510. So I think the question is, is, uh, is the commission comfortable with a two inch uh, deviation? So basically for table games would uh, not a minimum of 510 be the requirement. Any licensees want to chime in on that? How in terms of your plexiglass for your blackjack style tables? Yes, we would commit to put a uh, place to glass on all blackjack style tables at a minimum height of 510. Okay, I know that that's not an issue for you, Lance. How about staff? Yeah, we agree. Okay, commissioners, that is not six feet. How do we feel about 510? I would like a reminder of 
Is that something you've already looked at with a vendor and that's what the height was? Again, is that industry standard as you, as you say? I'm just trying to remember that conversation. Sure. So uh, we've actually, we built those in-house and uh, that was the maxima, maximum height that we were able to achieve. And that's being used across jurisdictions right now. So there's somewhat of a prototype that every, that's being used for blackjack uh, style tables. That's correct. Right. And Seth is, is nodding his head. Yes. Yeah. Um, right. And I think that was discussed last week as well. Bruce, you agree with that, Bruce Ban? Yes. Okay. Do we have Commissioner Zuniga, would you like to weigh in? Yeah, perhaps this is now a theme of mine, but I'm fine with, with that. Uh, you know, it's, it's uh, the, the person is also still sitting down and facing forward to a barrier. So I'm, I'm fine. Great. Commissioner O'Brien? As I said last week, the, the two inches to me is de minimis and is in my comfort zone. Um, so the 510, 511 that we talked about last week, the 510 number is fine with me. Okay, Commissioner Cameron, are you with the knowing learning today that that's kind of a standard? Are you more comfortable? I am. Thank you. I okay, am. Commissioner Stebbins. Uh, I'm comfortable with that. Okay, so do we need to make any other changes with respect to the social distancing on table games? I don't think so. Okay. okay. Um, Loretta, how are you feeling? I uh, know. Uh, agreed that that was the outstanding item that had been consensus reached on the other uh, portions of that section uh, in the prior conversations, prior meetings. Excellent. Okay, so now um, occupancy. I believe um, our restart group had a lot of discussions around this and there's a lot of math going on, including I think we used an abacus perhaps and a, um, <laughs> a, a calculator that had a real, I think it had the old fashioned um, it's nostalgia. <laughs> so, so with that said, um, you know, we were uh, trying to uh, take into consideration many factors, and I'd like uh, um, Interim Executive Director Wells, if you're in a position to uh, prepare us for that discussion, that would be really helpful because it is it is um, challenging. So, Commissioner yeah. Zuniga, let us know if for any reason you need to, anything repeated. Okay, we know you're moving. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Uh, so, Commissioner, there, there, are, there are different models that uh, we explored, and you know that from the last time we had different uh, options in the memo, and then we had numerous conversations about how to accomplish that, looked at other jurisdictions. We're looking at a variety of issues, particularly, you know, what's going on at the casinos, what's expected to happen when they open. Um, there are jurisdictions that use a percentage of the occupancy. However, um, the group that worked together, the internal working group, came up after a long period of uh, debate and deliberation about a potential solve to uh, the occupancy level issue. Um, and that was a metric that would include identifying the number of open positions, so the number of gaming positions once the casino opens, uh, tripling that because not everybody's going to be sitting at the mach at a machine or at a table the entire time they're there. There's going to be a little movement going along and also adding the number of employees. We want to keep the employee number separate because you know, the casino is going to have employees and we wouldn't want that to detract that from the calculation of the patrons. Add that uh, and also if there are any amenities that there's, for example, they're opening restaurants, the governor already has guidelines for restaurants and the capacity at restaurants. So for each restaurant that's open, the, cas the casino would just follow the restaurant capacity guidance, which has already been provided by the Baker Polito administration. So those three things combined together would give you the occupancy. The one caveat is that we do have uh, one licensee PPC, which has a racing component. So we'd need to add the numbers to the occupancy for the racing component, which would include uh, the number of PPC employees, the number of MGC employees, uh, the participants in the racing activities, and the um, and the potential spectators. And I think Loretta has that sort of broken down. So that's the general thinking of, of the metric right now. Uh, we have gone through various iterations. The numbers tend to come out the same as far as 
um, why uh, uh, comparison to other jurisdictions that are under these kind of uh, tighter guidelines that we have. Um, so that's kind of the uh, final recommendation that we've come to. Um, I think, uh, you know, I, I can defer to also to Commissioner O'Brien for some sort of deeper dive into why sort of starting with the um, open positions was important. Uh, but also, I think it's relevant to keep the employees as a separate metric uh, for the occupancy level. If, if that's helpful. So, <clears throat> Commissioner O'Brien? Yep. Um, so, we did do a number of um, scenarios, some of which were in Appendix D, which was the materials that were provided last week that we're still referencing, which um, went on some open slot position and gaming position availability and also occupancy percentages. Um, when you look at some other jurisdictions that are capping at 25% of occupancy, um, the calculations just laid out by Executive Director Wells are in that ballpark. Um, what we felt comfortable with in terms of keying it to available positions is unlike some other jurisdictions like say New Jersey and Rhode Island, um, again, we do not have bar activity. And so there is a question of keying it into the main activity is going to be the available gaming positions on the floor. There will be the other amenities of the restaurants, et cetera. They are subject to the already existing rules. And so keying in the fact that um, what those numbers are that consistent with the guidelines of parties no greater than six should really be arriving if, if it's consistent with what the governor's directives are in restaurants. Coming into that meeting at about three in a party would allow flexibility for parties up to six, individuals coming in, availability of the seats, and overflow without overly taxing the floor and creating a risk of people idly standing around, which we had concerns were gonna exacerbate some of the conversations we've had about what to do with the drinks and the alcohol. Um, separating out the employees, particularly at this phase, also allows the licensees the flexibility to determine who do they need to actually effectuate the security, the services, the cleaning, everything that's gonna be needed uh, in a way that doesn't have them worrying about pitting clientele versus the employees they're gonna need to execute this. Uh, the only thing that I think we did talk about that's worth um, maybe additional discussion too is whether we want to overlay a cap on it at this stage of and in no event greater than an occupancy percentage. Uh, I don't think we're anywhere near that risk of creeping up to an unacceptable percentage given how we're opening and how the licensees are opening given the restrictions. But I do want to throw that out as another aspect of the conversation that the working group had as well. And just to add to that, we would be monitoring uh, the needs um, as the reopening begins and, and the public health metrics inform uh, our restrictions and how the casinos are doing and we could come back to the formula. But it is based on the open positions each licensee would have at the time of the opening. It, it also allows for flexibility so that if plexiglass is en route um, and there's a reconfiguration that allows that number to go up there in communication with IEB, obviously about the layout, and therefore that number would be, you know, the factored in um, in terms of the, the greater availability of the open gaming. Right, and, and that communication is presumed um, and, and part of, I'm sure, other requirements and regulations. I don't know if we need to include that in the guidelines, but... Right. It, it does allow for that flexibility, as Commissioner O'Brien points out. As, um, as your gaming positions expand, you would be able to make the adjustments. Do you want to just, again, go through it um, one more high level to make sure everybody's heard, heard it? And Commissioner Zuniga, do I still have you? Yeah, I'm still here. Okay. Do you... Um, well, just one, we'll just repeat it one more time so to make sure everyone understands it would be, the formula would be, Karen? I, I can jump in. Uh, okay, the, thank formula, you, the formula would be the number of available gaming positions times three plus the gaming area employees plus restaurant capacity utilizing the occupancy limit set by the governor's guidelines regarding restaurants. 
Now I did do uh, draft this with restaurant capacity, but you may want to do plus uh, capacity of available amenities. I like that better. The yeah, occupancy I think, that, limits. I think that captures it more accurately. Yeah, I like that better. Amenities versus restaurants. Yeah, because all the amenities are being defined by um, the advisory board. Right. Did you hear that? Okay, Commissioner Zuniga. Yes. I, I did, and I think it's reasonable. Commissioner Stebbins. I think that's reasonable. Commissioner Cameron. Yeah, it, it would appear to me that the working group thinks this is the best way to move forward, the most accurate way, so that there will not be the risk of congregating. Uh, my only question was um, the ability of the licensee to capture this number. Is that is that how is it doable? And do you mean it's like almost too fluid, Commissioner? Well, I, I, I just wanted, to, I'm just trying to um, think about how you, in fact, talk about gaming position times three uh, plus employees plus other amenities, uh, the percentage that would be allowed. Um, I'm just wondering how, in practical terms, so that there, number is, um, is captured. Because one of the things that we've seen with other formulas would be to take the available gaming positions and maybe multiply it by a certain percentage. And I think what we've really done is the formula actually outlines, it really lays out the thinking behind the formula um, and, and maybe more exact than a general percentage, whether it's 15%, 20%, 30%. But the, to the extent that would be more helpful, it, we would want to capture the percentage that really captures those factors. Um, and because the, each, each facility has different amenities, this, it might be helpful to have it broken out as, as recommended today. Uh, again, maybe uh, as we go forward, we might need to reconsider how we define it. But do you want to hear from the licensees right now, fellow commissioners? Well, I, I mean, I, re I believe the working group, it makes a lot of sense to me that the rationale, the, the whole idea of how you got to the number makes so much mm -hmm. sense. The issue for me is just how, yes, how. Workability. Yes. Okay, uh, uh, Jackie, Seth, and Lance, the, the workability, does that, um, how does that formula sound to you, Jackie? Uh, that formula sounds fine, thank you. Um, and we are installing uh, counters, so we'll we'll be able to track that. Excellent, uh, Seth. Yeah, the formula sounds fine. Um, we will, I think, as I mentioned previously, we'll have to control that access to the building. It's hard, given the you know floor model, it's hard to control on and off the floor. So we'll use those occupancy numbers as really a a building occupancy, at least the first level building occupancy, which we control through people counters and uh, and surveillance. So um, I believe it's uh, I believe it's practical and achievable um, to uh, to hit those numbers to use those numbers as as limits. Excellent. And um, Lance. Uh, no issue. Certainly workable and uh, software helps us aggregate the uh, the occupancy and we'll be working uh, very hard to control the uh, the entrance as you folks know. We'll take it down from three to one so we have that control over who gets in and then uh, we'll use the other two for exit only. And again, the software does aggregate for us uh, entrance and exit to give us a number. Excellent. Commissioner, I'll just go with each of my fellow commissioners for final questions on this topic. And, and then we'll circle back to make sure we're all set. Because I'm cognizant of the time, but we are not rushed. Commissioner Zuniga. No, no questions. Excellent. No, thank you. Thank you. Commissioner Stebbins. Um, no questions, just one comment. I'm, I'm, I will be curious to see what each licensee has for a queuing plan. Um, obviously, there are going to be some peak times where you might be hitting up against this uh, occupancy limit. So um, each property has some different challenges with respect to queuing patrons. So I'll, I'll be looking for that as, as part of your final plans. Commissioner Cameron. Uh, very comfortable, no additional questions. Thank you. And thanks to the team for all of that uh, 
work in putting those numbers together and being thoughtful about what makes sense. Thank you, and it was a great team effort and discussion, so thank you. My favorite part, of course, was the calculator that Bruce, <laughs> Bruce used. And uh, Commissioner O'Brien, I know that this was, you know, you advanced the discussion, but I, as it evolved today, are you comfortable? No, definitely. I, the only thing I would do is reiterate what has been said uh, in terms of the team effort and the amount of work that went in for the other members of the working group to allow us to come bring it to a conclusion yesterday. All right, so Loretta, um, outstanding issues for you if uh, we are to finalize these guidelines. And are we all set now? Yes, I, I believe I'll be able to do that today. Uh, so just just for clarity, we're also adding in the for the racing uh, for PPC, we're going to add in the racing numbers of employees, MGC and patrons uh, to that number. We could put that in an appendix um, and I think the IEB could put that together um, separately. And Karen, just so I'm um, I understand we're not talking about the racing barn in those facilities we're strictly talking about the clubhouse to watch the races and for patrons to come and make bets etc the, the gaming floor and that yeah. includes right. so, yeah but it, when there there is a, lance help me out here there is an area outside now there are there would be a reduced capacity for outside there's a little smaller area for racing there and then uh and then inside so lance if you want to comment on that that would be helpful to, to be clear right now that under the guidelines no spectators for the horse racing so we are only talking about gaming floor at this moment for okay. calculating occupancy. So we would use the language uh, simulcast area instead of gaming floor for, for right. racing? Right, exactly. The Thanks. total occupancy Thank 593 you. and whatever the governor's directive is as it relates to a percentage of that 593 is what will be used. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay, great. Yes, it does. Is that helpful? Okay. Commissioner you, Zuniga, uh, Commissioner Zuniga, were you able to hear Mr. George okay? Yes, just fine. Okay, excellent. All right. Um, that's a really good point. Thank you uh, for that clarification. So in terms of process, we did um, reserve the right to vote today. Of course, we don't have the finalized document, but we have certainly um, aired our our discussions and we've gotten clarifications that were very, very helpful for today. We got cl clarifications from the licensees that are very, very important. Um, we have great confidence in, in Ms. Lilios in terms of being able to move forward on um, amending the document um, per our discussion today. How can, um, I, I don't see um, our general counsel, not because he's not on, he's just not on my screen right now, but in terms of um, moving forward, there he is, Mr. Grossman, good morning. Um, moving forward, uh, we could vote on our guidelines as presented in the hard copy, subject to the um, amendments that were discussed today. And then, um, uh, do we need to do another? I, I don't, I'm trying to avoid having to reconvene for final approval, although I would like to reserve, of course, if there were some, you know, inadvertent error. Um, if Commissioner O'Brien saw something that needed to be corrected, we could, of course, reconvene to amend. This document is always subject to amendment. So could we vote subject to the amendments being uh, memorialized as for discussion? Yeah, I think that that's that's right, and I think you just want to be clear as to what your intention for these guidelines are um, exactly, and how they will go into effect, or when they would go into effect, um, and for how long. Uh, presumably, um, they will run parallel with the governor's reopening committee's uh, uh, advice. So that that's just something else to consider. They may need to be revisited. Um, in the future, so we should leave that open as well. But yeah, I think otherwise, uh, Madam Chair, the way you framed it, I think is exactly right. Commissioners, does that sound okay? Is comfort level okay? I'm seeing some nods. Uh, I think I saw Commissioner Zuniga's phone nod. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm uh, I'm okay. I'm still here. I, I'm I'm on the street though. Okay, he's outside the Great. street. Well, we. 
we know you have a hard noon stop. So if, if there, can I, first, I just want to pause. Are there any other questions concerning this document? You've had it with, you know, um, from quite a while now, we've had a lot of discussion, but there's absolutely no reason to hurry. Any concern, comment at this time? I am not seeing any of my commissioners asking to speak. Okay, then if any, if we would like to move on this, I am welcoming a motion. Um, Madam Chair, I move that the commission adopt um, the minimum requirements for the initial phase three opening of gaming establishments as set forth in the memo that was provided by uh, IB on June 16th, 2020, but consistent with amendments discussed that date and at today's. Second. Second. Okay. Are there any further comments, questions? All right. I will do a roll call vote. Commissioner Cameron. Aye. Commissioner O'Brien. Aye. Commissioner Zuniga. Aye. Commissioner Stebbins. Aye. Chair votes yes, 5-0. We appreciate everyone's good work on these minimum requirements. We wish our licensees um, you know, great success when the reopening is permitted. We don't have a certain date that will always be dependent on the public health metrics. And um, we thank our, our state leadership for the guidance that they will give us going forward on the reopening. And to each licensee, I thank you for your patience today. Very, very meaningful. And we, of course, will continue to work closely with each of you and to, <clears throat> to Bruce and Burke, who are our experts and their team. Thank you very, very much. Thank you. With that said, if there's no further comments, Commissioner Cameron, Commissioner O'Brien, do you want to say anything further? Yeah, I'm fine. Thank you. Okay. Oh, just another, St a thank you to everyone. Commissioner Stebbins? I'm all set. Thanks to the team. Great work. Okay. And Commissioner Zuniga? Thank you, everybody. All set. Okay. Do I have a motion? Move to adjourn. Second. Okay, roll call vote. Commissioner Cameron. Aye. Commissioner O'Brien. Aye. Commissioner Zuniga. Aye. And Commissioner Stebbins. Aye. And I vote yes. Thank you so much. Everyone be safe. Thank you. Five zero. Aye.